Hey there, everybody. Thanks a million for joining us today. Uh, we're going to get to a very interesting um, session with David uh, Simmons on Otherize. But just before that, I just uh, wanted to um, go through a bit of house cleaning that we have a few uh, um, items that I wanted to mention just to let you know that uh, tomorrow is going to be the monthly commissar community call. This is going to be a community call jam-packed full of uh, a lot of uh, information since the uh, tomorrow's commissar release is going to be uh, one of the biggest ones that we've put out. So um, if you can make it to the community call, I would definitely recommend it. We're also going to be naming the contributor of the month plus a new commissar maintainer. So very exciting indeed. Um, also um, noteworthy that in on the 17th of October, we are going to launch Commissar on Product Hunt. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that and uh, looking forward to, you, to your support. And um, that's pretty much it on my side. So for today's session, this is a virtual workshop like uh, any other. Uh, in the sense that we're going to start off with a few questions so we can get to know our speaker and uh, their background. We'll then move on to a, a hands-on demo to get to know uh, the problem space and the tooling uh, more in depth. And then after that, uh, well, uh, throughout, feel free to um, ask questions uh, in the chat. And um, if it if it's fitting during the demo, uh, but, but more than likely afterwards, we'll get to those questions. I have a few uh, ready myself, and, and yeah, and then if we have time, we'll do a, um, a game that I usually enjoy doing, and then we'll um, call it a day. So, without further ado, let's um, introduce today's speaker. So, in today's session, we're going to be joined by David G. Simmons, head of developer advocacy at Otterize. Um, with expertise spanning time series databases and IoT, uh, as well as many other topics that we'll explore today with 20 years, with over 20 years of experience in software, having passed through many amazing companies like InfluxDB, QuestDB, Comunda, uh, and Startree, rest assured that we're in really, really good hands today. Um, he is really good at translating complex uh, tech into understandable language, and we really thank him for that. And um, and you can find him on X, formerly known as Twitter, at uh, David G S I O T, and uh, be sure to check him out there since his feed is always super active and very very informative. So. David, um, how's it going? Sorry if I uh, missed anything, but um, but yeah, in your own words, uh, um, let us know about your background. That was a great intro, actually. Thanks so much. Um, yes, I have been around for a very long time. I've been doing this forever. And um, yes, I'm old. Um, uh, but that that was a good intro. I, I, I started off as an actual developer doing, you know, hardcore developing on... Uh, down in the network stack in the in the uh, TCP IP stack, and have uh, sort of moved through a whole bunch of different stuff. Mostly, I just kind of wandered into stuff by accident and ended up doing it for a long time, like IoT. I just kind of wandered into that, um, and I've been doing that for twenty years now. So um, it's not what I do now, but I like learning new stuff. So um, you know, that's kind of what it's all been about. Is ooh, that looks fun. Let's go do that for a while. You know. And what would you say like um, interests you the most, like kind of professionally or in, in the tech space, tech space at the moment? Um, really hard to say. Uh, you know, I still have like IoT devices all over my desk, and I still uh, do that. You can see that uh, glowing orb up behind me. That's actually an IoT device, and I, I enabled my on the air sign as well, so I can turn those on and off remotely, and and they do a you know stupid tricks. Um, but there's just so much going on in the tech space in so many areas. Um, it was, it's interesting to me that I'm, I'm, you know, with this job at Otterize, I'm doing, uh, Kubernetes, which it turns out is a lot of the same problems that I was working on back, in, you know, almost 30 years ago, uh, in networking and network security space is what I started out doing was doing networks, uh, networking and network security. 
Yeah, health fitting is like a full full circle. Um, my my career is 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 much shorter, but uh, yeah, that's how I also started out by by getting a, a CCNA certificate and in routing and switching. So uh, yeah, networking is always a, a cool topic to to. You know, we can't do much without a network, right? It's it's what everything flows over the network. So you can't do much without it. Exactly. And um, yeah, just for the, the people who may not think about uh, networking that much on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I just wanted to kind of uh, define a couple of uh, uh, terms just to, to, to kind of um, have them um, in our back pocket in relation to uh, understanding Otherize a little bit better. So... Um, how would we define the difference between authentication and authorization when it comes to authorize? <coughs> so um, what we're really talking about with uh, authorize and, and in the Kubernetes stack is not the kind of authorization and, uh, and authentication that you or I do, right? When we sign into a service, right? Signing into a service, we are we authenticate as who we are, and then we get authorizations of what we're allowed to do, right? So those are two two parts of it, and in in this area, it's more of machine to machine communication, and so it's how do these machines authenticate to one another, prove who they are, and what they're allowed to do, right? And Unfortunately, what a lot of folks do in Kubernetes areas is they kind of punt all of that um, and they they build a cluster and they put a, a big fence around the cluster and let's hope nobody gets in, right? But if you do get in, then you have access to everything, right? And that's kind of what we're trying to prevent is um, by adding authentication and authorization to services within the cluster so that even if you do get in, you still have to have the right credentials and the right uh, levels of authorization to do things within the cluster. Perfect. Yeah, understood. And would um, definitions like um, zero trust, is, is that what we're talking about? Um... Yes. Basically, services don't trust anybody, right? I don't trust anybody. I'm a service running in a cluster and I don't trust anybody. You have to prove to me who you are and what you're allowed to do, right? And I try to talk to another service and they don't trust me either unless I can prove who I am and what I intend to do. Um, one of the, mm -hmm. actually, I, I, I want to go back to one thing because we're talking about authorization and authorize and one of the things that cracked me up about this company called Otterize is it's an Israeli company and they named it Otterize because when an Israeli says authorize, it sounds like Otterize. Oh, <laughs> so I just thought, you know, they had a really good sense of humor with that. And our logo is an otter. And I just think that's kind of cool. Right. Yeah, um, some people uh, and, and they wouldn't be wrong to um, think that we uh, uh, invited you on just because um, you also have uh, an otter as a as a logo. I, our we we have a beaver. It's not necessarily in the in the logo. It's it's our mascot. Um, but um, to be honest, you have more of a reason to have it. We just thought it, it was cute. Uh, it is really cute, and and I have a great time making uh, stickers with our uh, mascot because you know otters are just so cute. So. Uh, exactly. If you find yeah, me at a conference, come find me, and I've got all kinds of cool stickers to hand out. So amazing! No, I think uh, when we do end up meeting at some stage, hopefully in person, uh, we we can exchange our <laughs> beaver and otter uh, stickers. Absolutely, that'd be great <laughs> for sure. So, um, just um, quickly going back, to, uh, also just to give context to people who potentially haven't um, struggled that much with uh, networking issues or, or problems with networking automations. Network engineers or, or Kubernetes administrators that have to interface with network policies, what, what kind of issues do, do, do they struggle with? What, what automations? So network out? policies are, um, at least as far as I understand them, and I am the, gonna be the first to tell you that I don't know much about them, right? 
but they are difficult and they are fragile and it's a real pain to roll them out throughout an entire cluster. Um, one of the things that I like about what I'm doing right now is that I can, and I'll show you this in the demo, I can do it and I don't have to know literally anything about network policies. And I can still end up doing zero trust in my, in my cluster without actually knowing how it's implemented. And that's kind of the point, right? Is you shouldn't have to know everything in order to do these things. Now, back in uh, 1992, which is a long time ago, um, in order to do basically what I was doing, which was zero trust, uh, I had to write an entire version of uh, UDP that was um, it fully encrypted, which was not easy, right? It's you can mm -hmm. encrypt stuff over TCP, but UDP is just kind of like fire a you know fire a packet, and if it gets there, it gets there, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. But encrypting those packets and then when it gets there, decrypting them is a whole different thing, or at least it was back then. So you mm -hmm. had to, I had to like get really, really deep in the in the uh, you know IP code to be able to do that. And nobody wants to do that, right? Because that's just too fragile and it's hard to maintain and it's hard to pass that knowledge on and keep doing that as you as you build out, right? And plus, you know, more than one person needs to do this, right? So automating it is what computers do. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes you, you, might get, you might not really see the full pers perspective of the sentence. Kubernetes is complicated and like we all know that it is, but no, no, no. Kubernetes is very, very, very complicated. There's, there's so many different components. There's so many uh, different uh, like m moving parts. And I, I mean, you don't need to know every single part of how the, the, the cake is made to be able to be a, a good um, Kubernetes administrator. <laughs> I mean, that's why the, it's, the, the, the cloud native um, ecosystem and just the amount of incredible um, um, add-ons and, and plugins that, that exist, exist because there, there really is no time to wrap your head around every single nuance around Kubernetes, right? Right, and one of the things that we're trying to do is make it easier for developers to do this, right? Let's say I'm developing a service that is deployed in a, in a Kubernetes cluster. As the developer, I know what service, what other services I need to talk to and what other services need to talk to me, right? And so I shouldn't have to leave that up to the Kubernetes administrators, the security uh, team and all that. I should be able to define, here's my service and here are all the connections it needs to make. And I can, you know, sort of put those two together and have that roll out, right? And that's kind of what we're, that's that's what we're enabling with uh, what we call intent-based, uh, it's IBAC. And so you, you declare your intent. I have this service and I intend for it to talk to these things. And then Otterize can take those intents and turn them into actual policies, right? I just have to say what I intend to do. Otherwise, we'll turn it into policies and, and I don't have to worry about it, right? And so I can write those alongside my code and, uh, and not have to worry about the implementation, right? Exactly, no, and yeah, I hear it, Warden, that's exactly what we're about. I mean, even though the uh, DevOps engineers, platform engineers, uh, cloud engineers, or, or, or Kubernetes administrators can get a lot of benefit from, um, from tools like ours and, and yours, but um, if we can make life easier for developers themselves without having them um, take the, the CKA exam, like the, 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 there's no badge to be worn. There's no badge that, that, that anyone really needs to say, hey, I'm a developer, but I'm also really good at Kubernetes. You, right. You don't need. And I understand everything about the cluster so that I can properly implement, uh, um, you know, certificate management in the cluster because I have to do that because I wrote one service. What? No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like no, no one has time for that. Yeah. But um, 
but yeah perfect and uh yeah it's just I, i'm i'm afraid that we, uh, speaking uh, about it too much will take away from the magic of actually uh, learning as we as we go so please feel free to 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 unveil otherwise and uh, let's check it out cool i'm gonna uh have to move my camera off to the side here so if i'm looking sideways it's just so that we don't have the uh infinite recursion stuff with uh uh with video cameras so I'm going to start sharing my screen here. And I'm assuming you can all see that, right? Perfect. There we go. Yeah. So this is what we're talking about, right? And declare your intents, not your policies. And um, so... I'm going to go through, I have built a cluster for this tail warden demo. Yes. It has low resource requests. I'm basically not doing anything with it, but I'm going to. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy a, uh, um, I'm going to create a namespace here for our Ecom demo, which is a big application that does a whole bunch of different stuff. And then I'm going to go ahead and deploy all the parts of it. Very nice. so there's a whole bunch of different service in, in services, including uh, a Redis cart and Kafka and all sorts of stuff, right? So it's not small. And now here's comes the fun part. I'm going to go over to Otterize Cloud. I can do this uh, um, other ways. There is uh, uh, just command line. But first, I'm going to go ahead and add a cluster. And we'll call it demo. And we'll call it our bite sized. And I'll tell you why I'm calling it bite sized. All right. So we'll use Otterize Cloud to do MTLS credentials. So MTLS is another one that's really a pain to do, right? It's deploying uh, TLS certificates so that, but it's not just like on a web browser, it's basically one way, right? Um, I don't have to have the certificate. You have the certificate and I get it. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's a good one. In MTLS, we both have certificates and we both check each other's certificates, right? So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to deploy that. But I've actually got a couple of other things that I want to add to this because I want to be able to... Uh, watch Kafka as well. So I'm going to add a Kafka watcher. Oh, no. I left the quote again. Oh, there we go. So, cool. gonna... so we're just, just to understand, so we're um, adding, we're installing the Otherize uh, Helm chart in the yes. namespace that you've spun up. Cool. Yes, in the cluster that I've spun up, basically. It's going to have its own namespace, which is Otterized System. And so it's creating that namespace. Oh, okay. I'm going to give it my cloud credentials, which I'm not worried about you seeing because I'll de delete the, the, clus you know, the cluster from our cloud soon. And I'm adding some other stuff here to provide certificates from Otterized Cloud. And I'm going to deploy the Kafka Watcher. And here's the name of the Kafka that I'm going to be watching. So now if we go back here, you'll see that the network mapper is now connected and the credentials operator is connected. And it'll take a minute for it to sort of find stuff, but we should start to be able to see if we go and look at our cluster,
that, that's perfect. And that, uh, the GCP uh, screen, we can see it perfectly, but whenever we head back over to the Otherize uh, UI, if we could just um, uh, increase it slightly, yes. so slightly. Perfect. Oh, and look at that. Oh. We have things showing up. Mm. So this is our application, right? We've got a load generator talking to a front end. We've got a bunch of services. Um, and right now, they're not quite all talking to each other. Kafka, nobody's talking to Kafka yet, right? So that'll take a minute to, to what it's, what we're doing now is our network mapper is listening to all the traffic in our cluster. And it's mapping who's talking to who, right? This is just actually a really useful thing to have regardless. Right, because oftentimes you're wondering, okay, so I'm deploying this, but what else is in my cluster and who's talking to who, right? And now I can see exactly what services are talking to what other services. I'm sorry, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the, the mapper can tell which services are speaking to which services at the moment due to the network policies that were generated by default? Because we don't have any intent, nope, do we? Not, Just not like... network policies. This is actually listening to traffic within the pod, right? Mm. EBPF traffic. It's saying, what I'm seeing is this is talking to this. And if, you, and if we click on these lines, so this one says that it's discovered that the front end calls ad service. Okay, so it's just discovered that it has, there's no declared intents. And I can see that the yellow lines. So this, it says would be blocked. Load generator would be blocked from calling front end if we protected it. And the server, it says, is unprotected, right? So I can, I can see what's going on in my cluster and I can see what I need to do in order to protect it. Does that make sense? A lot, yeah, yeah. So let's see if anybody's talked to Kafka yet. Yes. So the checkout service is talking to Kafka. Right. And these are stuff that we don't really care about. So let's go only look at the Otterize Ecom demo namespace. There we go. That's a little better. Now, what do we want to do with this? Right now, we are not enforcing anything. We don't have any network policies deployed. We've got nothing, right? That's what we see here. But if we go and we do, let's say, Otterize network mapper export the server. If I can type front end dot otterize ecom demo. This will show me, remember, if I clicked here, it showed me the discovered intent that load generator calls front end. And here is that expressed in YAML, right? It's a client intent, load generator calls front end. So I can actually run that same command again and pipe it straight to kube control. And if we go back here and watch our, oh, there it went. See that? Yeah. We, we have a green arrow, which means that client has declared its intent. It's discovered that this is the intent. Here's the declared one that I just declared and applied, right? And this client, would be allowed to call front end if I protected front end, right? Mm. So now, since I have this green arrow, 
I could actually protect the front end service and we would have basically zero trust between these two, right? I've declared that this is what I want to do. I have a network policy in place and I can enforce that network policy. So let's see. I have a YAML file here for protecting the front end. And these are really simple YAML files, which is also kind of nice, right? I am gonna declare that it's a protected service, that front end is the uh, protected service, and I'll, that's all I have to do, right? So I'll apply that file. And if we go back and watch what happens, There it is. It's now protected and it still works because I have a declared intent. So I declared my intention to do it. I put in place a network policy with that intent. And then I applied that, I, I started enforcing that network policy. And here's the cool thing that I can do is I can actually walk across this whole thing and start protecting services one at a time. One of the things that is really scary about deploying these kites, kinds of things is that um, at some point you sort of feel like there's a big red switch that you have to throw, right? And am I gonna break something? If I just deploy network policies through the whole thing and turn on enforcement, what's gonna break? Well, I can kind of see now what's gonna break. So let's go do add service next. So instead of front end, we'll change this to add service. And here are, now this is a little different because you would think that, well, add service is only being called by front end, right, as a service. But there's mm -hmm. all these other intents named. And that's because front end calls all these other services. And so I want to declare all of those intents at once so that I don't overwrite them later. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So now I can do that same thing. But sorry, those intents were, were picked up automatically, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. Right. All I did was I said, you know, who calls ad service? Mm -hmm. And it says, well, front end calls ad service. So let's go find out who else, front, everybody else that front end calls. And we'll declare all those intents at once. And so the network mapper just exports those intents as a YAML file. And if mm -hmm. I apply this, we go back to our, look at that. I have now declared network policies for all of these services, mm -hmm. right? Now, here's a problem that I see. Front end calls product catalog services, but product catalog service is also called by recommendation service. So I can't just protect that yet, or this would be blocked, right? But let's stick with ad service for now, mm -hmm. right? It's only got one line coming in, it's green. So let's turn that one green. Sorry, I'm I'm actually uh, colorblind, so I thought the previous line was was green. Oh. What was the previous color? Uh, it's a sort of a yellowish orange. Oh. So if we apply that protect ad service, it will change from unprotected to protected. There it goes. Perfect. So nice. So so 
literally only front end is allowed to, to communicate with. Right. With. So if somebody came in and deployed a rogue pod here and tried mm -hmm. to call ad service, they wouldn't be allowed mm -hmm. because they don't have the proper network policy. Mm -hmm. Now, notice I'm deploying network policies, right? Network policies are active per service protection, but I still don't know anything about network policies. <laughs> and you also don't know how big that network policy is getting because right. uh, with so many uh, apps uh, in it, that make up your, your, right. your microservice there, it's... It will get really big, really complicated. And yeah, just the, the way that you're visualizing it here is just makes it so easy to debug to know. It does. It makes working. things a lot easier to. Well, first of all, just here we go. Now we've now we've got somewhere because now mm. we can see that all of these other services are actually calling Kafka, right? Mm. So I could protect recommendation service here because I see that it's already got a declared intent. So there's a network policy coming into it. So I have a recommendation service protection file, basically just says protect it, right? And if I apply that file, we'll see recommendation service turn green because it is now, it will now be, it currently it's unprotected. I just applied a protection to it and there it is, it's protected, right? So what I'm now doing, you can see is I'm looking at all the services in my pod, in my, in my uh, um, cluster and I'm going through them one at a time and making sure that they're protected and making sure that I don't break anything in doing so, right? So I can protect checkout service, right? Because it's got a green line coming into it. It's got no yellow line, not, no, no, nothing saying that it would be blocked coming into it. So I'll call the otterize, if I can spell network, and I will export the intents from the server. And what was that server again? That was checkout service. Actually, I'm doing the wrong thing here. Let's attack, let's uh, just protect the checkout service. And we should see that turn green as and, and get listed as protected because I just applied protections to it. There was nothing wrong with it coming in. So and there it is, it's protected. Now you'll see on the outside, it says would be blocked, right? So if I were to protect any of these services, checkout service would be blocked, my app would break and I'd be hosed. And I'd be that person that broke production. And nobody wants to be that person, right? So I need to declare all of these network policies. Mm-hmm. And I can do that in one fell swoop by basically picking anything that is called by checkout service. So let's choose payment service and we'll do authorize network mapper export server payment service dot And we should see a bunch of network policies spit out, right? 
those are all the services that come out of the checkout service, right? Here's the checkout service. These are all the things the checkout service And if we give it a second, there we go. I've now got declared network policies for all of those. And I can start protecting them. Yeah, and, and at no point there, there was any breakage, there was any uh, miscommunication. Right. right. So we can protect cart service. Now, I am going to show you what happens when you break something, just because I can, right? Because hopefully this is not production. Yeah. But you see this, that recommendation service, if I protect product catalog service, the recommendation service would be blocked because I don't have a network policy declared. So let's just see what happens if I do that, that was the product catalog service. I am now the person that broke production, right? Because recommendation service can no longer call the product catalog service because I didn't put in a network policy in place. So let's fix that really quick. What was this one called again? Product catalog service. You'll see that it said that two of them were unchanged, but it added one from the recommendation mm. service. And now I'm green again, right? I'm, I'm good here. It's protected, I'm allowed, production's back up. So mm -hmm. this is one of the other nice things about this graph is I can see at a glance, I could see before I did that, that I was gonna break it, right? Mm -hmm. And I did. Yeah. Okay, so don't do that. Use this as, you know, let this be your guide so that you don't break stuff. And I can now protect all of these as well. The payment service, the currency service, the shipping service, and the order service. Mm -hmm. Because I've got network policies declared coming into them. Would it be safe to say that a best practice for um, utilizing otherwise is intent first protect second absolutely that is okay. that is the way to go about it because the intent basically says this is what i intend to do and it creates the network policy right so now the network policy is in place the protect is the actual enforcement of that policy and if i turn on enforcement of network policies before i have network policies then I'm enforcing stuff that doesn't exist and nothing can talk to anything, right? Yeah, and, and, and just for, for someone who maybe like glazes over the documentation, would it be, and, and they only learn one thing from this, would it be safe to say that you can never break production by creating an intent, but you can the other way around, yes. right? You, you should not be able to break production by creating an intent, Okay. right? That's saying what I intend to do, right? Yeah. And it's declaring that for some reason, my Kafka mapper is not working correctly because uh, I must have deployed it. Oh, I know what I did. And I can fix that. Nice. So we're going to go way back in my history. There we go. 
I called it Kafka zero. And I should, I believe, just call it Kafka. The reason I'm changing this is that um, I have deployed Kafka with it spitting out a bunch of logs. And um, we can actually read those logs and not just see that payment service wants to call Kafka, right? That's pretty simplistic. But we can actually map which, uh, you know, what exactly payment service wants to do. Is it producing to a Kafka topic? And which Kafka topic is it producing to? And I can enable just that so that, uh, you know, payment service can produce to this Kafka topic, but it can't just randomly produce to other Kafka topics. It also can't read from random Kafka topics, right? So I can actually do these, these Kafka ACLs this way as well, which is really quite handy. Um, but I deployed it wrong. And so we'll have to see if it manages to, to get itself figured out. Date. Yeah, but that granularity is probably something that um, if you didn't have this, it would be very, very just time consuming to, oh to configure God, yourself. Oh my God, a nightmare. I can't even imagine having to do that. And, oh, now I'm, you know, I'm, do I have a default to deny in, in Kafka? And now I have to go change all that. And how do I have to change my, my Kafka ACLs when I deploy a new service? Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. I'm all set. Yeah. Right. So we could walk through this and protect basically everything here until we get to all green, which I'm sorry, you can't see um, the colors. And I should probably make a note to go in and do accessibility checks on it to make sure that people can actually see these things, right? Oh, well, to be honest, I, I can I can actually see the, the difference. It's just that they, they both look green to me, but, uh, uh, but, but that's that's really just me. So it may be a minute before uh, Kafka, the Kafka watcher is able to figure stuff out about what specific topics, but let's do currency service and shipping service. We'll do this currency service and shipping service. And currency service and shipping service are now protected, right? Kind of cool. And it turns out that we're also doing uh, MTLS on all of this. So the MTLS certificates have been deployed as well. So what we're getting to here is zero trust, right? Mm -hmm. Not only do we have network policies in place so that only authorized services can talk to other authorized services, but it's all encrypted with MTLS. So if you happen to, again, this is, you know, you build a fence around the cluster, but if somebody gets over the fence and they're in the cluster, they can do whatever they want. Not anymore, right? Not only can mm -hmm. they not do any what they want anymore, but they can't even snoop traffic to my currency service, right? Because it's encrypted. Exactly. Yeah. It's so like I'm I'm getting myself to a zero trust cluster where even if somebody breaks in, they can't do anything. It's like it's zero trust with zero the hassle because uh, going through uh, each uh, relation and each dependency between the, the pods is super straightforward in, in the super visual uh, console. And of course, th this uh, we're, we're talking about a hypoth hypothetical situation in which it's one developer that's, uh, that's in charge of this particular uh, microservice. But I could totally ima imagine a much larger cluster with various teams and then and of course if you're enforcing a zero trust environment each team member is going to have to talk to the other team member hey by the way can you can you uh, allow this uh, communication between this uh, pod and that pod 
and the hassle to enforce that genesis is just huge. Yes, exactly. And as a developer, I can say, you know, recommendation service intends to call product catalog service. And so I can just create that intents file, right? I have some here. Uh, so, right, if I'm developing the ad service, I can just, uh, just create this intents file along with my code and put it into GitHub. And okay, there's a whole CICD pipeline, right? And as that CICD pipeline is rolled out, guess what? These get rolled out with it. You want the security team to weigh in and say, yeah, that's allowed. Well, now the security team can just go to GitHub as part of the pull request merge process and look at what the intents are and say, yeah, we'll allow that. That's okay, right? That's uh, that's perfect. That's that's in incredible because one thing that you mentioned before about breaking production, I was wondering, surely there's a way to apply the intents and to um, therefore create the network policies through Autorize with uh, like in 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 staging or or in or in yes. other environments, right? And um, surely there's a way that you can kind of work all this out before in a non-prod environment and then kind of like ship it in. And, and as I said there, that would be the way to do it. Well, and you can see that I've actually been doing that, right? So had I been exporting all of these intents instead of just sending them straight to kube control apply, but piping them out to a file, then I'd have this whole directory full of all my intents and mm -hmm. all of my enforcements, right? And it works in production. And so I deploy all of those, it works in staging. So I deploy all of those when I push to production and they all get applied and production is now fully protected as well. And I was able to test it out in, in staging and I have all my intense files and I have all my my uh, um, enforcement files and I'm ready to go, right? Exactly, so, so you need not ever um, uh, interface directly in, in, in product unless you're into testing in, in production. Uh, so some people may like to do that, but you have like this non-prod playground where you can test things out, see uh, how, how networking can be inf affected with the different intents, the different protections, and then once you're happy, boom. Right. You just apply it. And it's really quite simple to sort of apply these things, right? Mm -hmm. And if I get a new service, I don't even really have to know much because <coughs> I can go look. And in fact, that's how I created all of these protection files is I had one and then I just went and changed the names, right? From you know, so from ad service to payment service. Now I have the payment service file that will enforce the network policies that I've created and I deploy that and I'm all set, right? Exactly. And I can walk through this until, you know, uh, yeah, my Kafka mapper's broken, but I can do I'm a terrible typist, which is why I have to look down at the keyboard. And uh, no worries, uh, not the best uh, typing either. And and anyway, we were talking about this right before uh, jumping on that um, that demos that don't go perfectly to plan are usually the the most valuable ones. Uh, that's when we learn from troubleshooting. So I'm just putting out the network intents for Kafka. Nice. And now all the arrows going into Kafka are green, right? And I've got the email services, the only one I can now protect Kafka and email services, right? And Zookeeper. 
-hmm. But now that I've got all of my arrows are, are green, which means that all of my network policies are correct, I can actually just apply enforcement across the board rather than going and doing it this way. So let's do go back to here where we deployed the, the um, Otterize stuff. Mm -hmm. And back here where it says intense operator default shadow, we're going to change that to default active. Mm -hmm. And what that's going to do is it's just going to say everything's protected. I really hope you have your intents good because everything's protected. And if you don't, something's going to get blocked. So let's deploy that. And as that's deployed, we should see Kafka, Zookeeper, and email service turn protected. And there it is. I now have a zero trust cluster. Everything is protected by network policies that are enforced. And I'm good, right? Exactly, yeah. Very, Kinda very cool, cool yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, very cool. And that's just that last step there of that kind of like uh, across the board uh, protection. Again, saves a lot of time. So we were calling this bite size because nobody wants to be the one that throws the big red switch and ends up with, with something getting broken, right? So yes, we're getting towards zero trust, but we allow you to sort of have zero trust in us at the same time by doing it one service at a time. I don't know whether this is going to work or not. So I'm going to just protect this service. Okay, then I'm going to just protect this service. And I'm going to work my way across my cluster one service at a time until I'm confident that, yes, this actually works the way it says it does. Okay, now I can just go and export all the intents from the whole cluster and apply them all. And then I can uh, turn the um, enforcement on for the whole cluster and just be done, right? But I don't have to do that. That's the big red switch, right? Yeah. And I don't have to do that. I can do it a little bit at a time to make sure that everything's going to work the way I think it's going to, and I'm not going to break anything, right? And, and this is something that the target audience, developers, understand perfectly, right? Because how is software created? It's created with incremental commits. If the yes. commits are smaller, better. And that way you have a quick feedback loop to make sure nothing's breaking. And so the same way that you do incremental commits as a developer, this is kind of like incremental networking. Yes. <laughs> Something that probably wasn't possible. Uh, well, and, and I can also, you know, as a developer, I know now that I'm deploying into a cluster that has... Uh, enforcement turned on. So I need to make sure that I have declared my intents before they get pushed to staging because I know that enforcement is on. And if I haven't declared intents, then it'll get pushed to staging and it will immediately be blocked because enforcement is turned on and I didn't tell it what network policies to create. Yeah. Now here's the cool thing. Do you know anything more about network policies in, in uh, Kubernetes than we than when you started? Not necessarily, no. Not really, right? Yay! <laughs> I don't either. And I don't have to. I don't have to go dig into how are network policies written and how are they enforced and how are they rolled out. I, I don't have to do that. I just have to look at my cluster and say, here's what I intend to do. Here are the network connections that I intend to have. And here are the ones that I want to protect and I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, like you definitely want to give people knowledge, but mm -hmm. knowledge of what they want. I mean, they, what, what developers want is does this work or not? And I think just from so from seeing this now through this demo, I think one of the main value uh, propositions that Otterize seems to have is that, sure, like we, we could do incremental networking, if we want to call it that, through very ever so slightly um, um, growing a, uh, and adding to a network policy and trying it out. But the thing is the feedback loop on that is 
is is huge. I mean, we, we would have to um, edit the network policy, apply it, then test it out by 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 um, by um, SSHing into the pod and then running a curl or something. Like it takes a long time to to make sure it's it's working. And the feedback loop that Otherize can give you is just instantaneous. I mean, if you're not <laughs> colorblind, the, those those lines will be able to tell you <laughs> everything you need in no time. So not, I mean, we sort of glossed over, you know, this whole, the network mapper thing, right? In, in a sense, but um, I worked back in, in the, in the nineties when I was doing all that security network security work. Um, I worked on uh, networks that were very, very highly classified. Okay. Um, it was where uh, all sorts of nuclear weapons data was stored, very classified. And we had network maps, right? But they were basically on paper of what was connected to what. And we weren't entirely sure if that was accurate. And it turns out it wasn't. <laughs> and I can tell you some horror stories about how we found that out. But it turns out it wasn't. And most network maps are that way. Pod cluster maps are the same way. You think you know what's in your cluster, but do you? Is there something in there that's talking that you don't know about? Well, now I know. And if I'm watching this and somebody adds a service it will immediately show up on this map. Oh, there's a new service in town. Where'd that come from, right? So now I actually have an up-to-date, always up-to-date map of what my cluster looks like and what the communication patterns are in that cluster, which mm -hmm. is hugely valuable. And, and that's just kind of the that's just kind of the gimme here, right? That's that's not even the whole point of all this. The whole point of all this is being able to protect it all. But the fact that I now know exactly what my cluster looks like and what every service is talking to and which other services are showing up here and those sorts of things is is a really good thing to have. It, it's huge because anyone who's tried to wrap their head around uh, Kubernetes at the beginning. I mean, I remember when I was uh, when I was studying it for my first uh, DevOps position. Sometimes I would like, just kind of close my eyes and just try to imagine. Okay, so what? Because the CLI, uh, you, you can see each line. Okay, so in this, I know that the, the, there's a certain amount of pods, there's a certain amount of services, there's a certain, certain amount of like load balancers. But you would try to like because everyone's quite visual right so you try to like imagine the cluster in a visual way and it's only really through um tools like initially like k9s lens uh others come to mind like um, argo cd the ui for argo cd is really really great for visualizing the cluster and now um the the, the yeah exactly i mean that ju just this small kind of incremental step in visualizing it's still like in cli form but it's just much much uh well this tells me what pods i have right exactly but it doesn't tell me who's talking to what that's right yeah. and i still have to guess that you know is is email service talking to currency service no idea absolutely no idea right and and canines is not going to tell me that right I'm going to have to guess, or I'm going to have to even worse, go back into the GitHub repository and look at the actual code. Ooh, yeah. right? That, that can open up a whole bunch of stuff because it means that every developer has to have access to every, the code for every service. I can't even compartmentalize it, right? Yeah, and, and, and if you do have an issue in your... Kubernetes cluster, I mean, the first place that you're going to look is never going to be the network policy. Right. You know, like, I mean, that's down the line because it's it's not that kind of intuitive that that might be <coughs> the issue. So the fact that you have this kind of like culmination of visibility through a, a much more visible diagram of what's actually in that namespace plus the the 
the the the the, the network relationships i mean there's no there's no guessing i mean if the if the line is broken if the line is red i mean that's you, you know where the issue is i mean i can even you know this is my uh google console right mm -hmm. and i still can't tell what's talking to what right yeah here are the nodes yeah right to go to observability blocks? you're just going to see the the health of the nodes yeah, yeah. I'm, it, but it's still not going to tell me, you know, what's talking to what. Exactly. So this kind of gives me a really good look into what's going on in my cluster and just what my cluster actually looks like in terms of communication patterns, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, incredibly powerful. I, I had this question saved for um, after the demo, but like while we're here, I, I just wanted to quickly ask you, um, now that we're on the Autorize UI, what would be kind of like a, 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 a potential like um, feature or functionality that isn't necessarily that apparent uh, to the, the first time user that, that really is quite valuable in, in your estimation? What, what was that again? I'm sorry. I'm, uh... What UI feature uh, that initially probably isn't that, um, that doesn't stand out, but, but you find it to be quite useful. Maybe something that we haven't explored in the Autorize UI. Well, unfortunately my, my Kafka mapper does not seem to be functioning. I, don't, I didn't deploy it correctly, but that's mm -hmm. a hugely valuable thing to be able to say like what, not just, yeah, that's calling Kafka, but what, topics is it producing to what topics is it allowed to you know read from and being able to set very uh fine-grained acls on my kafka implementation is huge right mm -hmm. um, and i'm not quite sure how i broke that today but i always break something so um today it's kafka right um that's it. Here's the other thing is that actually you can also generate this graph from the command line. It just doesn't look as cool. Yeah, I can imagine. Right. You can generate an actual image from this, but it just doesn't look as cool. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. always go to the cloud because I like to be able to see it with, you know, pretty colors and, and Bezier curved lines and all that stuff, right? And being able to watch it in real time as I add protections and 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 define network policies and roll those out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, just looking at it now, I, I understand. I, I would always go to the, the, the cloud also. Amazing. And, you know, uh, Amazon, so Amazon just announced their uh, their VPC CNI integration, right? So they have their own CNI. We work perfectly with that, right? You don't even have to change anything. You can use their CNI. You can use Istio. I mean, whatever you want to use as your as your network policy, you know, mechanism. Pretty much, we can work with that in the mm -hmm. same way. You don't have to change anything that you're doing that we did here right <clears throat> mm -hmm. very very interesting and um, any any upcoming features on the on the roadmap that <coughs> yes we are we we do have some features coming up um we are we are working on some things like uh um uh let's see um rds and uh AMI so that you can you can use those. Um, we are also, I will say, participating in Hacktoberfest, which started this week. And our network mapper and our intense operator and our credentials operator are all open source, as, as is all of our documentation. And we would more than happily welcome contributions. Uh, so if people want to go and, and hack around with it and, and see what else they want to do and implement a feature or something, we're, we're all about open source. Perfect. Yeah, no, that was actually going to be my last question here about uh, which would be the best way for, for contributors who are interested 
to the, to get their hands dirty and to attack some of the open issues that I'm sure you you have. So um, yeah, at the end of this, if you don't mind, maybe you can um, share those links and we'll add it to the um, YouTube video that we upload a little bit later on. Cool. Um, um, amazing. Yeah. So um, so but apart from that, would would there be any other ways for um, contributors to get involved in, in the project? Uh, you know download it, play with it, use it, um, you know, submit issues, uh, submit, you know, feature requests, submit, submit pull requests that fix issues or add features, you know, um, basically if there's something that that's not in here that you really need to roll out into production in your environment, let us know and we'll work on it. Um, we are absolutely 100% customer driven. So if we have a customer that says, look, we want to roll this out into production, but it's missing this. Well, okay, you know, let's talk and we'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll work on that so that we can get you into production with this. Um, I'm, I am, you know, I saw all this and I was, I was just kind of blown away by, by how easy it is to do this stuff in Kubernetes that is generally very hard. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, this turns rolling out MTLS and network policies from a project. Right. We all know what a project is. You got to get, you know, management involved. You got to get security involved. You've got to get, you know, it's got a timeline. It's got a budget and it's going to be nine months of incremental work to get it rolled out. This is not a project anymore. Right. This is, uh, yeah, I can do this. I, you know, we, we can we can roll this out next week, right? I can roll this out in my cluster next week and yeah. not break anything in production, <laughs> furthermore, right? Yeah, and, 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 and you don't need a, a huge security team to be sure that you're, you're pretty well protected in your production environment. Right. I mean, I can, I can now show that I've got, you know, certificates deployed i've got mtls certificates deployed and uh and everything's protected right i've got network policies everything's good and i can show that on every service and this is what front end calls the cart service and i've declared the same intent so we're sure that's okay and it's protected and we're all good right Incredible. Um, so, so yeah, David, we, we just went over an hour. I want to be mindful of your time. Uh, this has been incredible. Well, this is the end of the demo, so we can do whatever you want now. I have demoed all I have to demo. All my, you know, my cluster's all green and zero trust cluster, and I'm all set. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I had a few, uh, a, a few things, uh, planned out here but um to be honest since you've already been uh, generous enough with your time maybe we can leave it for another one sure um but uh but perfect yeah so that was super clear i uh, we got um a really really good insight into uh, um what issues that we can um tackle now with Otterize without necessarily becoming network engineers. So really, really uh, appreciate it. Um, is there anything else you want to share? Anything else apart from the Oktoberfest? Uh, no, we are actually, by the way, um, for people who are participating in Hacktoberfest on our projects, we are actually still going to send t-shirts this year. I know Hacktoberfest is not, but um, if you, you know, if you get, I think it's three pull requests uh, merged in our repositories. We'll send you. We'll send you some swag. Very nice. Uh, worldwide. Yep. Nice. Nice. Uh, very cool. That's a that's a great incentive. So, David, thanks again. It's been an absolute uh, pleasure, and um, yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be in touch. We'll we'll see each other. Yes, absolutely. Thanks so much. This was a super fun. Had a great time. Cool. Catch you next time. Okay, bye. All right, bye-bye.